morning, the investor and all interest uh, people who are joining uh, the online uh, digital roadshow from JWD Info Logistics today. Uh, thank you very much for your interest in our company. Today is a great opportunity for us to present to you uh, the updates and our performance for uh, quarter three of year 2020. Uh, in this quarter, there are a lot of uh, many improvements that have been happening after uh, Thailand has been impacted by the pandemic situation. Uh, I think that it is uh, such a great news that uh, JMD uh, is able to recover our performance and most of our business start to be like gaining a lot of momentum in terms of profitability and also the revenue growth. Uh, as I'm going to mention later in the presentation. So uh, basically, uh, the theme for this uh, quarter that we present to the investor is the riding the next normal, just to ensure you that JB is uh, on a grip uh, to control and handle the situation well uh, for the new normal situation. And we are very much ready for the benefits that we can uh, take uh, based on the logistic service that we can provide to customer under the new normal condition. This is the agenda for this today's presentation. Uh, I would like to start with the highlight of Q3 uh, that we have just released around uh, two weeks ago. Uh, as you may have seen the results uh, from our published report, uh, we are able to successfully uh, attain the revenue growth of around 10.7% year on year comparing to Q3 uh, 2019. This uh, mainly contribute for many business. For example, the co-chain co business has been uh, gaining a lot of momentum this year, and it has gained uh, quite a significant amount of revenue growth, uh, both uh, every quarter and also in, Q in Q3 compared year on year with last year. We also have uh, some new business which contribute a lot of new revenue to JFD Group. Uh, for example, we have done uh, a new operation on the barge terminal, which is uh, categorized as a logistic infrastructure, uh, starting to uh, contribute the revenue to JW Group starting from Q3 this year. This is another one uh, important contribution that gives us uh, revenue growth uh, uh, in this quarter. Apart from the new business and the business that gained momentum from the pandemic, we also uh, would like to talk a little bit about our performance recovery. Because as you may see, uh, may know and seen from our results earlier, that in Q2, Thailand as a whole has been impacted quite seriously by the pandemic. And JBD also, even though we still uh, profitable during the Q2, but definitely the profit dropped quite significantly from last year. In Q3, we are able to uh, regain our momentum in terms of the performance recovery. Uh, many businesses has been impacted during Q2 is recovering. Uh, and the the one most important business that has been impacted during Q2 was the automotive business. Uh, luckily, in Thailand, the automotive industry has been recovering quite fast, starting from around uh, the month of uh, July, August, uh, until the end of Q3. The production volume and the sales volume of the uh, automaker in Thailand has been increasing uh, continuously and the trend is still going upward for the Q4 and following next year. So uh, it is good news that our automotive logistics service has also received this benefit and we are able to regain uh, our revenue level uh, with the growth of around 55% from last uh, quarter. That is quite a significant growth comparing to what we expect uh, earlier this year. We are also uh, recovering some other business uh, quite uh, satisfactorily, like uh, the dangerous good terminal also uh, start to get uh, recovering momentum from its revenue growth. Uh, some other business also contribute quite a lot in this quarter. For example, the transportation business, which also uh, get the benefit from the recovery of the automotive industry, where the car carrier job uh, has got a lot more uh, work during Q3, comparing to last quarter where most of the automaker factory has been closing down. Apart from our business operation, we are also still focusing on expansion and growth. Uh, the JBD has always been uh, trying to uh, do 
this year, though, we have been like slowing down a bit in terms of the investment to make sure that we are uh, well prepared for the unseen or unknown uh, situation that may happen in the future. Uh, nevertheless, we have also still continue some of the solid project as uh, we have tried to update you in every quarter. Uh, and also this quarter, uh, those projects are continue and some of them already completed. Uh, we'll show you the list of these projects uh, in the section regarding the project updates and you will see the progress of each project as well as our future plan of expansion. In summary, in Q3, we have a total revenue of 993.8 million baht, where out of that around 71.2% were contributed from uh, logistic and supply chain, and 20, uh, around 27% were contributed from the food and supply chain group, and uh, around 1.6% were from the other business. From the logistic and supply chain service, 71.2% was uh, further divided into five categories as shown on this slide. Uh, warehouse and yard management contribute around 52%, transportation around 11%, Relocation service around 5%, sales service around 1%, and logistic infrastructure around 2.4%. The food service and the other business are contributed uh, according to what is shown on this slide. And what we try to stress to our investor and shareholders is that uh, we have strength uh, to survive to many difficult situations, including this year where the pandemic hit. So many, so many uh, industry has been impacted seriously with this situation, but JVD on the other hand still be able to maintain our level of revenue and still maintain the profitability during Q2 and uh, we have grown uh, even higher revenue this uh, quarter. Uh, this is uh, strongly uh, reinforced by uh, our diversity. Uh, as we show on this slide, you see the diversity that we have across the value chain. JVD has a service that serves the customers starting from the logistic infrastructure to transportation, to warehousing, and to last mile transportation. We also uh, serve customers in different segments, either it be B2B customers, B2C customer, or C2C customer, and also across many industries, either it be the consumer goods, uh, the dangerous and chemical goods, the automotive goods and also some food and cold chain, also one of our important uh, product category as well. We're also trying to penetrate into more markets that will demand logistic service uh, under the new normal situation. Uh, I'm gonna update you a little bit about our plan uh, in later slide. Uh, another diversification that we have apart from business aspect is the geographic aspect. As you may see on this slide, we have a footprint of our operation and our partner network across Asia, uh, across ASEAN countries. Right now we have operation apart from Thailand, uh, we have in Cambodia, Vietnam, Indonesia, uh, Myanmar, Laos, and Taiwan. We also have our partner network in Malaysia and Singapore. So this has been helping us in uh, reaping the benefits from the different uh, economic impact that each country may suffer during each difficult this situation. We are so able to uh, close down uh, the logistic turnkey solution for customer who needs uh, the cross-border uh, logistic solution to serve them in ASEAN's country. This has been helping us to grow uh, consistently uh, since we have uh, listed the company and start expanding to ASEAN. In this slide, uh, we show you the report of the study that has been done by the Bank of Thailand regarding the GDP of the country, as well as the consumption index of the country. You may see that in Q3 and Q4 onward, uh, the GDP will start to recover and grow bigger. Uh, every quarter also the uh, private consumption index is start recovering into the normal levels starting from July this year. So this has been uh, the indication that as the consumption increase, the demand for logistic service will be increasing at the same time. Uh, similar to Bank of Thailand, the government saving banks also uh, study and give a report regarding the uh, speed recovery of each particular industry in Thailand. They categorize the industry into fast, medium and slow recovery stage. 
after the pandemic. As you may see, the fast uh, recovery group uh, of service that uh, they report are mostly uh, covered by the JWD service, especially the one uh, that we highlight here is the automotive. You see that the automotive has been predicted to be recovered very fast after the pandemic situation, and that has been also uh, confirmed by the actual results as we shown on the graph on the right hand. You see that in Q3, both the automotive production volume, uh, domestic sales volume, as well as the export volume has been rebounding from Q2. So we will start seeing that uh, uh, the recovery of the automotive business unit of JWD will start to gain momentum starting from Q3, and we believe that the growth uh, tendency will still continue uh, to Q4 and also to the next year. This is the outlook that we have uh, forecasted uh, uh, by ourselves uh, regarding our own revenue projection. As you may see on the graph on the right hand side, uh, we initially predict that Q3 uh, we will have a small recovery in terms of revenue comparing to Q2. But the actual situation is that we have recovered and gained uh, much more than we expected. So the revenue that we can achieve in Q3 is even higher than what we have in Q1 this year and even Q4 last year. And we predicted that uh, in Q4 we should be able to still maintain our, our growth a little bit from what we have in this quarter. So in summary, you see on the left hand side the yearly outlook of year 2020. Uh, we, uh, As a conservative projection, we quite confident that we should be able to at least maintain the revenue level as we have last year or have a, 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 a certain level of growth comparing to last year it could be something around uh, up to five to ten percent comparing to last year uh, and we uh, believe that with this kind of momentum in the service that we can launch uh, to serve the new normal situation we should be able to grow our revenue uh, continuing in year 21 and 22 accordingly in q3 uh, we start seeing uh, the recovery of many business, as I mentioned earlier, the automotive industry, the automotive, automotive transportation has been recovering quite fast. The dangerous goods, uh, products, uh, import and exports also start to recover, even though not as fast as the automotive, but the trend is there. And according to what we see uh, up to today, the dangerous good start to getting better and better every month. So uh, we believe that uh, in year 2021, we should be able to start resuming to at least normal condition or business condition and starting to continue to grow our revenue and profitability again. This is the strategy that JBD has been laying for the next five years. We uh, has come back and revisit our strategy because of the pandemic impact. We have to start to look at our plan, uh, how to grow the business and how to penetrate into the market, both uh, in Thailand and also the regional and international market. We are trying to uh, use our specialized uh, specialization in many business that we have, for example, in dangerous food, food and co-chain, automotive. Uh, and our experience in the free sort operation to try to uh, uh, introduce the new service and solution to customer both in Thailand and in the region. Uh, this is the new S curve that we are trying to penetrate during the next five years up to year 2025. We look that we are trying to penetrate both to expand existing uh, strength that we have, broadening our logistics scope, uh, uh, include the multi uh, model. Uh, uh, like a multimodal transportation and some other infrastructure network that we have been start to build uh, in the last few years. We try to strengthen our partnership with many uh, partners that we have right now. For example, we are partnering with CJ Logistics from Korea. We are partnering with the Phnom Penh Special Economic Zone from Cambodia. We are partnering with Transimic Corporation from Vietnam. We are partnering with Samudera Group in, from Indonesia and we are partnering with uh, boxing logistics from Singapore. So you see that we are trying to strengthen our partnership in order to make sure that we can have a, 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 a good network in order to provide an end-to-end -end solution to customer. We are also trying to look more into penetrating the P2C logistics segment 
because as you may see in the B, uh, the business of JMD are mostly focused on B2B customers. We are starting to penetrate into B2C more and more right now with our express service, express delivery and cold chain express. Uh, we are also looking into explore um, some new market that we may not focus that much uh, in the past. For example, we are looking to penetrate more into the pharmaceutical and healthcare products because it's going to be one of the very important products uh, in this new normal condition. We also look into uh, some kind of property and development uh, in terms of investment into the new warehouses and try to uh, refinance those through the selling of the asset to the REIT. Uh, we, are, we have uh, successfully provided one turnkey solution to customer this year, uh, which I'm going to show you in the project called JWD in the Wonderkorn, where we do the turnkey logistics solution, uh, buying the land, building the warehouse, providing the IT service, and also operation inside the warehouse for the long term uh, 15 years agreement. Uh, and we, after we complete this building, we uh, are selling this uh, warehouse to the REIT to get the funding back in order to expand more with the same strategy. So this has been quite successful and we are trying to look into uh, doing this kind of uh, model uh, to help us in terms of uh, expansion and ease up our financial requirement. We also look into some proper uh, possibility into doing some kind of strategic investment into some related uh, company, including some startup company that we are talking to right now. Uh, uh, the deal is uh, on the way. We are doing some due diligence on some kind of acquisition at the moment, but uh, as soon as the deals become more solid, uh, we will update you about our progress in this kind of expansion mode. But anyway, uh, currently, we only try to be more conservative, especially this year. We only expand the project that we uh, see the solid growth and revenue that will came from those assets that we will invest. So we only invest in three new warehouse this year, and uh, we also expand two branches of self storage this year. Apart from that, we have, we we are still delaying our plan uh, in order to reserve our cash flow and wait and see for the situation to recover. Uh, right now, the situation starts to getting better and better every every month, uh, and we start to look into some opportunities that we can uh, utilize our excess cash flow in order to uh, buying some assets or acquiring some shares of some uh, strategic companies. Uh, under the, this condition, we, we look into uh, the opportunity to find some cheap investment uh, because uh, many business still suffer from the situation, while they really, uh, still uh, have some reserve cash flow. So, uh, as an executive team, we look at this opportunity as a, as a good timing to start looking for a growth plan again. Uh, as for the project that have started this year, the first one we show on this slide is the JMD Nawanakorn project that we serve uh, the customer uh, from the US. Uh, the 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 warehouse was built, uh, completed uh, already, and the operation has already been started on 12th of November uh, this year. Uh, this warehouse is one of the models that we are trying to test the build to suit project, and uh, it, it has been quite successful. Right now, we are on the process of uh, selling this asset into the REIT in order to get the funding back and re expanding our warehouse. Uh, for the build to suit uh, project that will come in the near future. We are also building another warehouse called building number nine in Mahachai area. Uh, this is the automate warehouse for cold storage. The uh, progress of this project is around 87% uh, right now. It should be complete by the end of this year and the operation we expect to start it you know, by uh, Q1 next year. Similarly, we also built another robotic warehouse in Su Wong used uh, for the purpose of the document storage service. This warehouse is now around 70% completed, and uh, we also expect that it should be able to start its operation in Q1 next year also. 
We also have just announced last month our joint uh, venture effort uh, with one of our uh, important customer called MMP. MMP is a customer who doing the business in the seafood and tuna product. They are one of the very important uh, seafood manufacturer and exporter from Thailand and they've been using JWD uh, and uh, looks for the opportunity to uh, join with us in order to build a logistic infrastructure to serve their product supply chain. Uh, with that kind of agreement going on, we, we have already uh, registered a new company under the name Pacific M Co Storage uh, to join invest in a new co storage warehouse in Maha uh, with MMP. Uh, this project will start in December and we expect it to complete around October next year. Uh, this is one of the special projects because we partnering with our customers. So once the uh, warehouse is completed, we expect that we should be able to fill in the occupancy uh, very fast. We expect that within the first year of operation, it should be able to reach around 70% of occupancy rate, which is already uh, 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 a profitable level of occupancy rate that we have for the cold storage facility. We also expand uh, our business in terms of the self storage that we are trying to uh, penetrate the market in Bangkok and also in Thailand. Uh, we look into the leaders in the self storage business in Thailand and we believe that self storage is a, is a future uh, business that will be uh, very successful and also there are many opportunities to gain some benefits from this business apart from its own operation. There are many things that we can do on top of this self storage project uh, to make sure that we can have like a value added uh, for customers uh, to increase our revenue and profitabilities. There is also an opportunity to arrange the restructure exclusively for the self storage facility. Uh, Similarly to what have been done in many other countries like in the US or in the Singapore, something like that. So that is what we are looking into. So we started to uh, expand our self storage facility uh, since two, three years ago. Right now, uh, we have six branches of operation. The latest branch that we have is the one in Phuket, which we acquired uh, from the previous owner uh, actually last month. Uh, and we also expand Rama 9 branch this year. So in total right now we have the cross uh, floor area of service around 13,000 square meters. This is the photo of the uh, new uh, Phuket facility that we have acquired lately. Uh, it is close to Patong Beach. We acquired at a rather cheap price of 15 million baht, which is actually cheaper than our own investment in each new facility that we have done in the past. So we think that this is one of the example of the opportunity that have arise during the difficult situation of the COVID-19. And we have a chance to find some good investment with higher return uh, uh, based on our reserve cash flow. We are still looking to uh, getting this kind of opportunities uh, from some of the related business that may uh, benefit to uh, JWD. Apart from the investment in the new warehouse and the acquisition that we have just mentioned and the joint venture, we also have one new operation that have just started in July. This is the barge terminal, which is officially launched actually since March this year, but the, the real volume that has started pouring in uh, was start from around mid of July. Uh, because of the COVID and those difficulties in terms of regulation and uh, rules that the uh, Port Authority has been released. Uh, so the operation have really just started in July. And as you may see from the graph on the right hand side, uh, the throughput of the container that go past through this barge terminal increased quite fast during July to August and still maintain that around uh, 10,500 boxes per month. And we expect that in year 2021, we should be able to increase the volume to up to the level of around 15,000 boxes per month. This is actually uh, the totally new revenue added into uh, our uh, revenue uh, contribution. 
uh, and this uh, is one of the important contribution that help us grow in Q3 and also into Q4 next year. Uh, this is also quite a profitable business because we have not invested uh, into the facility. Uh, Port Authority is invested in this facility and JFD is responsible for the operation only. So uh, we are working with them based on the revenue sharing scheme and the profit has come since the first month of operation. We also expand into the B2C. As we mentioned that we are trying to penetrate more into the B2C market. This is the effort that we are trying to penetrate with our own strength because you know the express B2C service is all there. There are a red ocean of service provider uh, competing on the price in the normal express service for like uh, e-commerce, uh, shopping online, something like that. But we are looking into some more specific and specialized uh, service that we we are uh, we have strength in. That is the core chain. So we are trying to use our core chain facility as the main hub to do in the express service for special uh, product that require temperature control. And this has been quite successful since, since the uh, start of the pandemic. There is a lot of requirement in terms of the core chain express service delivery. And we have uh, joined hand with CJ Logistics uh, to launch the nationwide network of the B2C Cold Chain Express, uh, officially launched nationwide since uh, 17th of August this year. And it has been uh, well received by customer. We expect that this business will, uh, will grow in every quarter from now on. Uh, those are the projects that we have done. Uh, in this year, we do have some new project in the pipeline uh, where we try to expand uh, some of the warehouses, especially in cold chain business, which is in demand right now. We are looking into some opportunity for acquisition and some investment into some company that are maybe a startup or a tech company that is related to JWD logistics service. That that is. Uh, under our radar right now, but uh, nothing is confirmed at the moment. Uh, uh, we will update you regularly regarding the progress of our expansion plan. But uh, before going to the Q&A session, I'd like to give you a brief highlight of our financial results. As shown on this slide, you see the overall financial highlights of JWD Group. In Q3, we have the total revenue of 993.8 million baht of revenue and in year to date nine months we have uh, around two two thousand and eight hundred fifty million baht of revenue this is actually uh higher than what we can achieve uh in the uh, the nine month year to date in year 2019 which actually not shown on this slide but you can see the data from uh, the published uh, information that we put on our website and also on the stock exchange. Uh, last year, nine months, we have around 200 uh, to 2.65 billion baht of revenue. So, in in summary, we actually have grown uh, around 200 million baht uh, for the nine months this year comparing to last year, and we expect that by the end of this year, we should be able to actually grow our revenue comparing to last year. What we expect for the revenue is that we should be able to reach around 3.8 to 4 billion baht this year. Uh, uh, but definitely, uh, despite the fact of the revenue growth, we still uh, need to accept the fact that the, the core profit is dropping this year because of a lot of a higher cost of operation and also some difficulties in certain business segments. So as you may see in the year to date profit that we have is 214.1 million baht comparing to last year for 244 million baht, uh, around 12% drop. Uh, still in the healthy level uh, in our opinion, and we believe that we should be able to grow our profit every quarter uh, comparing to Q2, which is uh, the, the, the low the lowest quarter that we we we, we see uh, in Q3 is start to grow uh, better, and we expect that in Q4 we should be able to achieve uh, even higher than what we get from Q3. Uh, in terms of finance costs, uh, uh, the finance costs as reported financial statement seems to be higher this year. 
uh, but uh, majority of that contribution of finance cost but actually came from the new accounting standard in Thailand called TFRS 16 about the lease agreement because it requires us to book uh, all the lease agreement as the asset and liability and also book the cost as a finance cost instead of the rent uh, we previously booked with uh, uh, before uh, deploying the new standard so you see that the the contribution of uh, this TFI 16 to finance cost is quite huge. Uh, so if we uh, subtract those parts out, uh, the finance cost should be something around 90 million baht, which is a little bit broad from last year. Definitely uh, that is ex expectable because this year we have to reserve cash and also uh, draw down some funding for uh, as a reserve uh, to make sure that we should be able to uh, take care of the situation in case something bad happened uh, in terms of the uh, uh, country or national level economy. Uh, the SGNA, on the other hand, you see that we have uh, do our best to try to trim down all the expense, and we successfully uh, reduced our SGNA around 8.5% uh, comparing to last year, and we we still maintain. The reduction of SGNA this year and also next year budget that we are putting on, we are also trying to hold and reduce as much expense as possible to make sure that we have uh, reserve cash and also contribute as much as possible to the bottom line net profit. This is the contribution from each of our business to the total revenue, where uh, I think uh, there's not much time to go into detail about each of these. Uh, I would just uh, focus on some of the important business that you may uh, interested in. Uh, you can study the slides and in detail regarding the revenue breakdown for each particular uh, service categories and also the gross profit of each categories as well. So let me go straight to each particular business unit that we want to focus in starting from the general warehouse. Uh, the top half of this page shows the, the result of the general warehouse where you see that the uh, revenue uh, in Q3 dropped a little bit from what we have in Q2. Uh, this is actually expectable uh, based on the starting of the flow of the supply chain because you know uh, in Q2 the supply chain of many uh, products has stopped and uh, the product needs to be staying in the warehouse, so our occupancy rate in the warehouse growing very much. You see the occupancy rate up to like 95-96% uh, uh, in Q2. And after the COVID situation start to resolve, the supply chain start to move on again. Uh, the product move out of the warehouse, some move in, some move out, there are some flow. You see that the occupancy rate start to drop to around 90%. We expect the occupancy rate to maintain around this level until the end of this year uh, and the revenue level should stay uh, quite stable comparing to Q3. Uh, even though the revenue dropped and GP dropped, we still have quite a healthy level of GP uh, from the general warehouse. If we look at it and compare to the earlier year's result, uh, uh, it is still in a profitable level. On the dangerous good terminal and chemicals, you see that uh, it start to recover. Uh, the growth of revenue is around 10% from Q2. Uh, we achieved around 109 million baht of revenue this quarter comparing to 99 million baht last quarter. Nevertheless, it's still significantly lower than what we can achieve in normal uh, situation. For example, you can see from Q3 last year, we have around 148 million baht of revenue. So the GP also dropped from last year, <clears throat> but still in quite healthy level. We expect that the dangerous good terminal and the flow of the dangerous good in and out of Thailand should start to resume uh, gradually, even though in Q3 it is growth is not as much. You see from the throughput that go through our terminal, uh, growing from around uh, 36,000 tube uh, go to around 39,000 tilt in Q3. Uh, still lower than normal level, but we foresee that it will start to grow gradually in every quarter from now. And based on our projection, we, we expect 
that the dangerous good should return to normal level around end of Q2 next year. So it will take some time, but the business will grow uh, comparing to Q2 and it is still quite profitable uh, uh, in any case. On the other hand, the automotive industry has been recovering very fast, as I mentioned uh, in the earlier uh, of this presentation. You see that the revenue has been rebounding from for our automotive logistics service. We can achieve around 55% of growth in terms of revenue of Q3, comparing to last quarter. The gross profit margin also bounced back to around 24-25%, comparing to around just 10 or 11 percent last quarter. So the business is back to uh, the profitable level again and we are uh, start to getting more job from our existing customer and also some new customer. We have many pending jobs that we have uh, been assigned in uh, late last year and early this year, but the project has been pending from our customer because of the close down their factory. Right now, the, the production volume start to resume to normal level and that plan has been uh, uh, continued and we are starting to do those new projects for customer in Q3. That is the reason why we start to recover our revenue quite fast and we, uh, we are quite confident that in Q4, we should be able to grow uh, or even uh, maintain or even grow our revenue comparing to what we can achieve in Q3. We believe that year 2021, uh, we should be able, to, uh, be able to continue to grow the automotive uh, business unit in terms of its revenue and profit compared to what we achieved this year because we have quite a very low base. Uh, similar to Dangerous School Terminal, we, we expect that it should be able to resume to normal level of operation within next year. Uh, document storage is going slowly, gradually, but grow every quarter, as you may see. It is a profitable business, even though it does not contribute that much revenue to us. On the other hand, the business has been uh, quite uh, in the prime uh, condition and getting a lot of demand and also profitability and revenue coming to JV Group in the cold storage. You see, we maintain really high level of revenue in Q2 and Q3. The GP stays around 44-45%. Uh, it is pretty much full in some location. For example, in uh, in Subintabong and Bangna location, our cold storage is right now full. In Mahachai, it is almost full. So that's why we are expanding the building number nine in Mahachai, and it should be able to complete by end of this year. Next year, we're gonna launch the new operation for the new warehouse, and it will add to the additional capacity for the cold storage and uh, help drive uh, additional revenue into uh, the coastal business unit. So we, we, we see a quite a positive outlook and upside for coastal storage for, for many years to come based on the current requirement and demand and the new normal situation. Apart from the warehousing, the transportation business is also another interesting business that we have. Uh, we have also rebound and grow revenue quite significantly in Q3 comparing to last quarter, uh, mainly contributed from the car carrier service that was like uh, totally stopped in Q2, but in Q3 it starts to resuming and it contributes a lot of uh, additional revenue uh, comparing to what we have in Q2. The profitability also goes up uh, in terms of uh, uh, the transportation service. Apart from co-chain, uh, apart from the car carrier, we also do a lot of cold chain uh, delivery and also cross border transportation, which is quite successful uh, from our point of view. Relocation uh, and self storage does not contribute much because we have quite limited time. Let me skip to a more interesting one, which is the infrastructure of logistics, uh, mainly contributed by the rail operation and the barge terminal operation in Lam Chabang. Uh, as I mentioned, we started to get a a full momentum of uh, boxes coming to barge terminal in July. And you see in Q3, the revenue is growing almost like double from what we have in Q2. And we start still expect uh, some growth uh, continuously in Q4 onward because of this new business. 
food business also another contribution that has uh, been growing quite well this year. You see the revenue has been growing every quarter. Uh, our vegetable cutting project in Taiwan has been very successful and has been built, uh, bringing in a lot of additional revenue this year from the food and supply chain business unit. Okay. Equity income from the affiliates, mostly in the overseas, uh, the highest contribution right now came from Vietnam. Transmit Corporation has been very profitable starting from Q2, Q3 this year. They still continue to be quite profitable. Uh, in Q4, they, we expect some drop uh, according to some uh, situation that Vietnam may face uh, in Q4 regarding the export. But nevertheless, we still expect quite high contribution from uh, Transmit. Uh, throughout this year. Cambodia, on the other hand, does not contribute much uh, this time because of the uh, industrial estate, PPSP, is not able to sell the land to the foreign investor because of the lockdown. Uh, they have a lot of backlog, so after the lockdown has been released, we expect that there are going to be a lot of transactions in terms of land sales from their backlog next year. Okay, in summary, we have the uh, net core profit of 72.5 million baht and uh, we expect that we should be able to grow our profitability uh, in Q4 onwards uh, gradually uh, and we are considering that based on the plan that we have and also from the strength in diversity that we have we should be able to uh, uh, assure the investor that we will be sustained and continue to grow both in terms of revenue and profitability. Uh, the financial position and key financial ratio are pretty much the same as last quarter. The cash flow is quite healthy this year as shown on this slide. Uh, because the, there are some already some question uh, coming in, so, so let me try to skip to the part of the Q&A for you because the time is very limited now. The first question is, uh, do you have any plans to lower the debt going forward? Uh, uh, could you please elaborate the plan? Yes, we, we do have the plan to reduce our debt. Uh, debt, uh, what to say, the debt ratio and all those because we know we, we have been investing continuously since we list the company. We start to raising the fund from the debt. Uh, and we, we come to the point where we start to reconsider the plan to rearrange uh, the funding uh, structure. Uh, one of the structure that we're looking at right now is to try to look for the funding from some other source apart from the debt. For example, we are doing some restructure this year. Uh, we are looking to do more uh, in terms of the restructure uh, next year and the years to come. But there are also opportunities uh, in terms of rearranging the capital structure which we are looking into right now, but there is no solid plan at the moment. But anyway, uh, what we can assure you is that we, we are keeping our eyes on our uh, debt uh, ratio and also we are pretty much uh, in control for our financing plan in terms of our uh, business growth plan requirement for the new CapEx investment and the funding source that should be matching with our plan for growth. So uh, we do have plan uh, to answer your question. We do have plan to lower the debt level uh, or the debt ratio. Uh, and what and the way that we execute it uh, could either either to either the restructure or some rearrangement of the capital structure. Uh, we will uh, update you regarding our plan once they become more solid. But anyway, please rest assured that we are. Uh, uh, having plans for, for these already. Yeah. Uh, the second question, could you please give more details on the management sustainability plans in long term? I think uh, JBD has been emphasis a lot on, put emphasis a lot on the sustainability. As you may see that we have been selected in Thailand sustainability index uh, for the third year in a row this year. And we also uh, putting a lot of attention in terms of the corporate governance. This year, uh, the result has just been announced last week. Uh, right now, this year we have the, the five star CT score, uh, which is an upgrade from last year where we got like four stars. Uh, we are putting a lot of uh, 
uh, attention into the term of sustainability in many dimensions, including uh, the environment. Uh, we have a safety team to taking care of all the our, our business that could uh, have some uh, impact to the environment. Either it be dangerous good, we have our safety team to help the Lam Chabang port in terms of uh, the safety, in terms of chemical leakage and all those things as a public service. We also have very much concern in terms of the control of the environment impact from the coal chain. We also uh, put a lot of uh, emphasis on the social responsibility. We look uh, very much on our uh, human resource uh, uh, aspect. We also, uh, what, what we can stress through this pandemic situation is that JBD is proud to say that we have not uh, lay off any employee or reduce any pay to any employee. We still maintain everything to all of our employees. We instead uh, increase some benefits to them like the insurance for the COVID and some of the PPE equipment that we had been distributed to our uh, employee, especially in the warehouse. Uh, we look into the ways to, to, to do a sustainability and we, we, we have our intention to stay uh, in the sustainability index as long as possible. We are also trying to maintain our CG level uh, in a high level for, for long term. So uh, because we are doing logistics, there are many uh, impact to the environment. We also have our team looking seriously into uh, this kind of uh, environmental uh, matters. In every project that we launch, we do our uh, surveys uh, in terms of the social uh, community around the new facility that we are going to build. They need to like uh, be in surveys for their opinion before we start to launch new project. So I, th I think that that is something that we have been doing and we are also very much uh, putting emphasis on this. Uh, the time is up. Uh, let me try to briefly for the question, the last question. What are your key concerns during the pandemic and has there been any change in the acquisition plan uh, during this situation? Yes, we, we, we have been reserving a lot of cash. We have been postponing a lot of investment. Uh, as I mentioned, we start to looking into that again right now for opportunity to get a cheap investment and good uh, return uh, based on our reserve cash flow that we have been reserving during the, the past six months, let's say. So I think uh, we have been slowing down and we will start to accelerate again if the situation is stabilized and we look that this is a good opportunity to gain a uh, very beneficial investment based on the, 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 the overall macroeconomic situation. So uh, hopefully that uh, uh, concludes my presentation. Uh, sorry, I, I had been speaking quite fast. <laughs> the time is very limited. So if you have any additional inquiries, please do not hesitate to contact JWD uh, through our IR channel uh, and we will publish all the information both in Thai and English uh, language on our website and also on the stock exchange. So please uh, feel free to browse through that and let us know if you need any additional information. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and hope uh, to keep in touch and meet with you again every quarter. Uh, and if you have a chance to travel to Thailand or if we have a chance to go abroad uh, in the near future, uh, looking forward to a chance to meet you guys uh, face to face in person. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, uh.